1075 Chatter. Chatter, chatter, chatter. 1075 Chatter. Well, I guess welcome to 1075 Chatter. Uh, today we're here with Mike Shimsky. Mike's our vehicle conversion manager. Um, Mike, uh, you've been with us about a year and a half now. Welcome aboard. Uh, welcome to the, to the podcast. And uh, you know, you want to want to get a double a little bit into uh, how how you got here and uh, what brought you here. So um, I'll let you talk a little bit about yourself, and then we'll we'll I got some questions for you. So. Yeah. So I, I came from a law enforcement background. Um, I was a cop for <clears throat> just over 25 years, and uh, I always wanted to know what I wanted to do when I grew up. So when I retired, I was able to um, have some uh, free time, and then I saw uh, that this company was uh, offering a position of a vehicle conversion manager, which interests me, uh, and kind of drawing on my past experience in law enforcement and uh, working with fleet-type um, uh, issues and, um, of our own. I kind of had the uh, an interest and a, a desire to maybe pursue that, so I came here and I was lucky enough to uh, be hired by you all, and I've uh, been here ever since. Well, we're happy you're here. Welcome <laughs> aboard. You've been here about a year and a half, I think. Yeah, just now, right? over a year. Just just, uh, just about a year and a half, and um, it was a p- position we we actually in our growth we created. So you're actually the first person to, to actually hold the title of, of vehicle conversion manager. So um, you came in, and we gave you kind of some groundwork of what to expect and then i think you kind of just took the job and kind of made it your own you ran with it you kind of um yeah i mean that was super um interesting to me because when i when i got here um i didn't really necessarily understand that and uh to see the the growth that since i've been here that the company's seeing and i talk to other people like is it always like this now this is like exponential growth and to have the ability to, to you know to have the trust of you and and the company to come in in a position that was kind of on chartered territory and the ability to kind of make it mine. Obviously, you know, there's room for improvement everywhere, but uh, I'm having a blast doing it. And um, we're really lucky to have a good group of people working for us. And um, so it makes my job a lot easier for sure. Well, and I, and I think, you know, part of it is you, you, you didn't just work in law enforcement. You, you were a supervisor in a lot of different capacities in your career. And I think that's what gave you the edge as far as when you came in, like, Dealing with people, right? I mean, you, you're not only just dealing with people, some difficult people uh, along the way in your yeah. career, because I know I had the same, you know, same issues you dealt yeah. with, and the di- t- difficult y- people all the time. So, and, and yeah, so you know, um, in my law enforcement career, I worked in various capacities and different, you know, um, ranks, um, and had the ability to, you know, supervise and manage people. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong, but yeah, it's interesting to see the different personalities now, vast personalities even in age and, um, you know, experience levels, but ha- having, um, it was, cha- you know, I found most challenging was you, I'm dealing with a bunch of people that have a very high technical competency, um, where I'm, I'm trying to learn that aspect of it where they might not have the management skills and, you know, kind of putting them together, you know, and, and also another, as I see the company growing, you know, I see it as my job to kind of prepare the next, um, you know, round of people to, you know, take over for me someday. So, and I think we have some really good people that, um, you know, the company's going to be in super good hands, uh, you know, uh, depending on where we go with growth and so forth. So, and, and like you said, growth, when you came in, we were growing exponentially. And then when you, you kind of, you kind of came in, we kind of just threw you to the wolves, hit the ground running. And it was like, and you were like, oh, and then I think now you see what the growth's like. It, it, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, super. Um, it's been crazy. And um, yeah, I mean, even in my short time, it, it's to see how much, um, you know, the business we're bringing in. And, uh, you know, obviously, I, I always um, say that um, on our worst day, we're still still doing a better job than our competition on their best day. And I do believe that, too. And I, again, from co- coming from a background as the customer for the years, you know, before I came here, I kind of see both sides of that and the quality of work that's going out that you know, we would accept as a customer, we, we won't even, we won't even provide that level of work. It's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be, a, you know, it, law enforcement, fire, EMS, they're, they're really zero fail missions, right? So the men and women that 
do those jobs. They have to have the equipment that's always going to be ready for them, never fail, and it's not and it's not going to you know the failure is not going to be an option. And I'm happy to say that we're able to provide that um, you know to our customers, and I, you know obviously our customers recognize that and uh, they appreciate it, and that's why you know I would assume it's one of the reasons the business is growing. I, yeah, and, and I hope that's the reason too. Is you know we we do put a lot in our quality control, and I, I know you, you know when you first got there, you you probably like oh okay, you know you've seen going back because you know working in law enforcement myself, you know we had cars you'd open the trunk and you'd be like, what is this <laughs> mess of wire? Like they would just throw stuff in, yeah. they, nobody cared. Yeah, and when it didn't work, it was like all right, well we'll get it fixed, and it just sat there yeah. until somebody fixed it. Now it's like like you said, I mean, and it was just wires and 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 switches, and it was pretty it wasn't an intuitive system now we're using computers computer controls you know it's gotten so much smarter smart siren smart smart everything i mean to the point where you can put the car in park and the siren turns off now yeah the old days when you got out and chased somebody all you'd hear is the siren going forever because it stayed on and you know now the car goes in park and shuts off the 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 first thing that happens the siren cuts out and the lights come on whatever 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 you set it to do right and that tech it's funny it's interesting to see how that technology has evolved in a short period of time because when I mean, you were doing it, like you're saying, it was different. You know, you turn the lights on, it's just con- connecting a current that's turning the light on. Now it's telling a computer to do something, you know, and then it, if this is happening, you do this. And, um, and, and you know, and which is nice because customers, you know, can customize things to exactly the way they want. Um, you know, you could flash patterns, you can have, uh, you know, multiple vehicles syncing to the same flash patterns when they're on scene yeah. through satellite, the siren. Which, which which that really helps because, I mean, how bright lights are now when they're all yeah. different flash patterns on the side yeah. of the road, it's even it's even more brutal. So the, the fact that they all can sync together, that's, you know. Yeah. And, that, and another thing is at night, a lot of those auto dim because they know it's nighttime. Right. The computer tells it, hey, listen, we're only going to go 60% power, not 100%, because they're so bright. I mean, LEDs are so bright. I remember years ago we had the little you know, little, little yeah. rotating lights. I mean, they, they weren't, you know, you could and, barely see them when the sun yeah. was out. Now you, now you can't see at night with the, with the LEDs. So technology, and, and you're right, it's been a short time, right? It's been. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember driving in a, you know, a police car where the siren is, a foot from your ear on the roof and you know that's just the way it was and then, and then you think well how silly that was <laughs> and then you know it's evolved and just all the, the things that we're able to do now with, with this equipment it's pretty cool yeah and it's 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 tough because you go back i retired just over five years ago and i did 25 years so 30 years ago the technology it, completely different i mean it's, yeah. it's 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 just it's just night and day really um and to see what like what comes in and, and i'm like you know, I'm always intrigued because I don't get on the floor all the time. I'm so busy doing other things that sometimes I come out and I'm like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Or, that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. And the other thing I think with the cars, especially with the police cars, more so than, than fire and EMS, is laying them all out. Because I think they're all, as long as they're, the, they're all patrol cars, the, the big thing, the big goal that we have is to make sure that every switch, everything is exactly the same. So no matter what car you're yeah. in, everything lays out the same because right. it's muscle memory, right? You, yep. Especially under stress. So. You know the shotgun releases in the same, mm-hmm. or, the, or the the whatever it is, the AR release for whatever the gun it is, the release is in the same spot. You know, so yeah. it, it, you can go there in, in a critical situation, right? And it's you don't you don't get tied up. You don't you know you, it's right to the button, right to what you got to do. Right, and then the the different agencies we deal with, like they want things their way, right? So we'll do it their way, and then the next customer we're going to do it their way, and uh, yeah, and, that, and I know that's something that's a huge you know huge. Yeah, it's 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 you know. Time is critical, especially in critical incidents, as, as we yeah. know. And I think, you know, making sure that, you know, it's and it's not just the switches. Our wiring is all done the same. It's the same color in every vehicle. It's, it's you know, certain certain things have certain certain layouts, and that's yeah. really the way it goes. So, um, you know, it, it, it is interesting how things have evolved, and, you know, it's just going to continue to evolve. And, and you know, it's interesting too. In fact, I had a conversation today with a customer, and it's and it's it's super satisfying to do this. And it was a law enforcement customer that was looking for to, a specific application on a car, and um, you know, he he was like, "Well, what do you think?" <laughs> and I had a pretty good grasp of what he needed, so I told him, you know, based on my experience, and you know, he he was like, "I didn't even think of that. Let's do that." So it's 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 nice to have that background background where I can, you know, um, 
yeah. counsel customers on how you know years and years of riding in a car. Yeah, and you, you know, advice, and, yeah. and dealing with insurance companies and knowing what they want, where where they want lights, and the number one you know cause of police say police vehicle accidents. You know, is pulling. Uh, at one time was pulling into intersections. So nose added, coming, nose coming into intersections. So just yeah. th- um, nuances like that, that people, you know, especially if it's like a new chief, a chief or like a, someone in a position who just took over as the fleet manager might not know that. To, so to be able to kind of point them in the right direction based on experience is, is uh, you know, that's satisfying. Well, and, I, and I think that that as a company, we do that a lot too, because we have, we have a couple guys that are in law enforcement. We have a lot of active firefighters as well, who a lot of us have, have been chiefs and stuff like that. So, you know, again, same kind of yeah, concept. It, it just it, it it rolls over. Hey, listen, you want to do that? We can, but here's why I wouldn't do it. Right. And you know, you base it on your experience, yeah. or or you know, you, you may want to consider this. We'll do it your way, but can, did you consider this? This may work a little better for you. Yeah. And, and I think that's what separates us too from a lot of the competition out there. Um, is that you know we have those those inputs, and sometimes we do make changes on the fly. You guys make changes on the floor after talking to a customer, right? I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, uh, and you know, just to kind of touch on what you're saying, you know, so we have right now currently nine techs that are working in the conversion uh, part of the shop. And, yeah, vast different backgrounds and emergencies, you know, fire, EMS, and so forth. And, you know, you, you, you've you worked in jobs where people, you know, you know, come to work and they're just doing, you know, what they're told to do versus – uh, here, where I see like the, the our techs have ownership in the price, so the, if they're looking at a work order and they're building it, uh, you know, per the customer specifications, I can count on my techs to say, hey, maybe we should talk to the customer about this because this isn't working the right way. Where I think, you know, in another, you know, company, they might just do whatever it says, yeah, and then yeah. the next thing you know, the customers get something they really didn't want. Yeah. So yeah, I, that's that's a huge part of, you know, and and like I said, the, you know, the, a lot of fire, EMS, you know, law enforcement background, to be able to go to go in and actually yeah. evaluate that. And you lean on those people, right? 100%. Guy, guy yeah. who's a firefighter, hey, listen, let me ask you something. I'm going to command people, what do, you, what do you think? Yeah. And they'll come over and they'll give you some advice. So. Yeah. And you, like you said, you have nine guys, nine personalities, and it's... It's definitely something to manage, but it also you know where your where the strengths and weaknesses are, so you know where to put guys. So. Yeah, and you know it's funny we were talking about it. it's it's like a, a niche like uh, you know when we hire people you know obviously we're hiring the best person f- for the position, but it's not as if you know unless you worked at an, another upfitter you know still it's going to be different. It's people that are coming in that are skilled uh, mechanically or with the twelve volt you know car set, but they have to learn. A, exactly what we're doing because you know it's a lot of it's proprietary right yep. and it's, it's a niche and and to do it our way you know the 1075 way so that's a little which which is yeah which is you know and we've been doing it that way for a long time and that's and that's another you know people are like oh you just you just can't throw these lights in and, and you know why does it take so long well that, right. because we have a process that we do it you know right. we just don't run wires haphazardly through a car we there's right. there's, there's processes and i know you and your guys are always taking those processes and, and modifying them and, and making yeah. them work. You know, new new vehicle models come out. You know, and you guys sit down and you go through different things on how to how to make the wiring work and how to how to really change things around. So, um, you know, and, and I know it's like you said, that's not your strong suit. Your strong suit is just kind of running the boat. You're, yeah. you're the captain of the ship, and, right? And I I, um, I I see my role is facilitating these people to do their best and to make them shine and to point out their strengths and, um, you know, exploit the strengths and diminish the weaknesses. Um, and that's been quite, a, you know, I think effective. And, uh, again, I, you know, I lean on them a lot for, um, well, and, and you can see, you can see, you can see the relationship you have with the guys when you walk in the shop, because, you know, the, even though they're working, sometimes they're you know you guys are joking around a little bit as you walk by each other and stuff like that, and so it's it's they're very comfortable with you as a supervisor, and I think they know because if they need something, they go right to you. They lean on you to lean on us. Hey, listen, we need this, this, and this, and then what happens? Usually, you come back to us and say, Hey, listen, I spoke to the guys. We had a meeting. We talked about this, this, and this because the guys you know wanted to bring it up, and usually we we go with whatever you guys think is best because we're trying to make it. The best as far as you know, the best processes to work. Yeah, and uh, the, I mean, you, you and the man, the management of the company is very responsive to that because I, I, it's 
uh, recognize that you recognize the importance of the talents and the, and the, the information that comes back. Um, so that that's definitely it can you know it's conducive to a very efficient work well, environment. Well, uh, you know, let's be honest. The, my days of crawling underneath the dashboard of a car are, <laughs> have long been gone, and Ryan and Matt also. Yeah. So you know, when you bring it to management, it's like, well, we we haven't really. You know, I'll stick my head in a car here or there, but right. it's not like I'm doing the install work every day. And right. if I was, I'd probably be seeing a chiropractor four times, <laughs> four or five times a week the way, you know. Yeah. But, you know, these guys crawl in these sp- spots and I around. go, oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, and, and then, you know, and then you get into these bigger builds with these these EMS and fire cabinets and these pickup trucks. And, and it, I mean, they get crazy. Some of these things get crazy. Yeah. I mean, the size, the weight, the, the, the amount of equipment going in. I mean, I've... You know, again, I've been in the fire service 32 years as a volunteer fireman, and it's just watching how much stuff goes into a vehicle now. It's just, yeah. it's insane. And we have some super talented, as you know, people that are um, very well versed on these one-off builds, you know, that you're not necessarily finding anywhere else. You know, we're, we're one of the few places that can offer that, um, you know, a custom body on a chassis, uh, one-off with, um, you know, Basically, we customize it however uh, the 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 you know the agency wants it. And, you know, those, yeah, some of those some of those some of those surveillance type <clears throat> vans and stuff that yeah. we do. You know, where you can run a you could run a whole a whole camera system and and basically tie in a whole building. If the building's under under whatever kind of siege or whatever, they have their own mobile command center where they can watch every camera that's being being piped back out to a van yeah. in the parking lot. Right. It's, it, you think about it, it's like yeah, you know. The technology to do that is, is great, yeah. but you still have to build it, right? Yeah. And I, I know, you know, I know you got a, you got a couple guys over there. I know Mark's one of them. Mark's Mark comes from a background that's a little different than everybody else because mm-hmm. he was in the RV industry, and so he has some different takes on stuff, especially when yeah. we're designing these these inside these Sprinter vans because that's kind of where you can lean on him because he knows more of that mm-hmm. than he does other things. So everybody has their their own little yeah. yep. their, their their own little you know specialties. And you got a lot of young guys there too that are new. Yeah. Um, and, but they seem to be eager to learn. They are and, eager and enthusiastic. And it's you know you, we, you know we have a couple jobs in the hopper right now. As you know, like other um, you know other companies won't even touch. No, we've had a couple that, that, <laughs> that were basically somebody quoted it and then and then they went oh you know what yeah. we're walking away from it right and then we we end up yeah we can do that yeah and, and we, we do it <laughs> and, and we do do it you know and, and, so that's pretty cool and you know. I think, you know, it comes down to, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of cooperation too, right? I mean, you, you know, you have to, you know, your guys are always working with Matt because Matt's doing the engineering stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, this isn't going to work. And then you got to go back to Matt, you know, occasionally so, it's, it, there's you know. so many moving parts. And, you know, I was, you know, we didn't necessarily realize until I started here, but like, uh, you know, with Matt, uh, who I think is probably one of the smartest people I know as far as like the institutional knowledge and his technical competency, um, being able to lean on his expertise, um, Michael in the cabinet shop, um, you know, Jimmy in, in shipping and logistics as far as getting equipment. So it's just um, being able to work with all these people uh, in such a, a way that, it, it, you know, it's very <laughs> it's very nice to be able to come to an environment where, where that happens and it's, like, and seamless. You, and, and it's hard because you, you came in a year and a half ago. A lot of these guys have been here four, five, six years. So you come in as the newcomer yeah. and it's like, yeah, you got to kind of – Oh, what's this guy? What's this guy's yeah. deal? <laughs> right. And it, it's, it's, it's the same as anywhere else. They bring it. Yeah. If they brought in a new chief at your department that was from from the outside, oh, what's this? What's yeah. this guy's right. deal? You're right. Scoping them out. Yeah. yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, sure. it's 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 just part of human nature. Is yeah. really what it is. I mean, you know. So so let me ask you this: You come from you come from the like you know I was doing public sector and private sector at the same time because I was trying to run a business as well as work in law enforcement. Coming from the public sector, you you roll into the the private sector. What's different? What, what do you see that's different, or 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 where where are your takes on on certain things with with it, as far as you know, um, what's better, what's worse, you know, things like that. So um, you know, it, it was. I think what helps me in this position is having the, the that now the institutional knowledge of working in the public sector, meaning most of, if not all of our co- customers are from that realm. So certain um, protocols and rules that they have to follow as far as purchasing where, you know, you can be like, hey, can you do this for me? Here's my credit card number. Like there has to be a purchase order requisition, purchase order yeah. issued before you can do anything. And, you know, and there's some there's some wiggle room in that that 
Um, yeah, wiggle room. But but again, the guy that comes in off the street, the patrolman that pulls in with the car. Hey, listen, yeah. you told me to bring the car right. here and have this looked at. But while it's here, can you do this, this, and this? Right. And and like I've even counseled some customers on the the process that you know yeah. that we're new at it because you know when the town the town is getting audited next year and they say oh there was no purchase requisition before the job was finished that that's a problem for them yeah you know it's not um so be, being able to navigate that so having that understanding but then coming to this side of it where um you know <laughs> um well you're not dealing with unions and contracts right so that's that's a big thing. yeah i always like to say like i you know i didn't work in the real world now i do uh, and but I, I don't mean that in, in any derogatory manner um but you know as far as when the company needs to do something how we do it um, or why we do it or, or why we do it and in the public side there's there's got to be checks and balances otherwise there'll be abuse but if i ask you for some it's your you know company you, you're the stake so and you could say yes no and it's done uh so i, I think like the the quickness in which things gets get the, done the red tape um you know and, and yeah as far as the employees like um you know a little bit different as far as um you know managing let's say non-union techs versus union cops uh, a little bit different um so yeah it's um it's, it's different like both were rewarding and and fun but like certainly the transition though yeah and, and seeing how like oh listen i asked for this today and it's here tomorrow it's in law enforcement, hey, we, need to, it. we yeah. need to change whatever it might be. Our copier's not working. It could take you three weeks to get yeah. somebody to come in and fix the copier yeah. because you had to call, you had to send an email to somebody in in purchasing who had to authorize them to come in to, to make the repair. And then they came in, they gave you an estimate, and then you had to send it back. Right. And, and for two weeks, you don't have a copier working. Right. Whereas, <laughs> exactly. you know, here you make a phone call, it's like, hey, listen, yeah. we need the copier's got to be up and running. Otherwise, yeah. we're not we're not going to be doing business. I mean. Right. And it's so those are those are things that I saw from the, the, the public and the private that that I always saw. Um, but again, I wasn't in a supervisory role. I never never wanted to be in a supervisory role right. when I when I worked in law enforcement. So um, I enjoyed being on the street. I enjoyed doing what I was doing. And I just didn't I didn't want to I just want to didn't want to get tied up in that minutia, if, yeah. if you will. Um, just wasn't my thing. And, yeah. you know, so, you know, now that you see it from different levels, you know, I'm sure, um, you know, a lot of it comes from. You know the years of experience as different supervisory levels and and uh but it is it is a different a different working environment yeah and it's nice to work for somebody um you know i always did work for somebody but you know and it's like just tell me what you want me to do and we'll do it <laughs> and that's and it's nice you know to, to be able to accomplish that well and you work for everybody you pulled over right you work for me yeah that's that what right. they always say right <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> you work for me so you know, and, and listen, dealing with difficult people, you know, difficult customers, it's just like dealing with difficult yeah. people on the street, right? Right. It's the same, use the same tactic. And, you know, yeah, and I kind of look at it as, um, you know, in my private, pr previous field, like the problems there, you know, to, to draw a comparison to, you know, it's like I come in like, you know, it's the world's ending because <clears throat> these bolts didn't come in. It's like, did anybody die? <laughs> Are we getting sued? We're on the front page of the newspaper. Then we're good if the answer to those three questions are no. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so I, I kind of it was kind of interesting to have that perspective and kind of joke about it with the other managers and in, in the shop about. How, you yeah, know, and some but, people get heated because it's like it's like we got to get this project out, and now, now we're missing this or we're waiting on this one piece. Yeah, and the guys get like all worked up about it. It's like, well, yeah. the, the, other than keep harassing the, the vendor right. who you're buying it from, what can what else can you do? Right, because they're you know they're going to tell you, oh, we're we're doing the best we can, or. Right product's not available or it's <laughs> right. you know yeah. and, and and you know you i don't think you came, you came in after covid so you yeah. didn't you didn't have to experience that those you know that was every time we tried to get something oh delayed because of covid you know right the world because the world stopped because of covid well we didn't stop right we went to two shifts we, we worked the two shifts and and we had to kind of make do with what we were handed we had guys going in, in and out due to do to exposures some guys right. wives were, were you know they worked in the medical field. They were exposed, so we did the best we could. We split shifts, and we just kept on divide and conquer, and we and we did the best we could. Um, so it was a weird time for us. And then yeah. the growth post COVID was incredible, and that was even before you got here. And then I think, you know, again we're we're still we're in another growth phase. Right. Um, you know, so it's it's been great. Um, you know. Definitely, you've been a, a, a big asset to the company. Um, 
you know, taking a lot of that responsibility. I know, you know, before you, Matt was doing a lot more, and he couldn't do the engineering work and, 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 and deal with the cabinet shop and deal with all the issues that are going on on that side and then dealing with, you know, and then Ryan was dealing with the customers because Matt didn't have time for the customers. So it's kind of like it all funnels in, you know, anything with a vehicle funnels to your side, and it's just kind of like, oh, Michael handle it <laughs> until, you know, he has to kick it up because of something yeah. something happened or, or, or whatever reason. Um, but, you know, normally it's just, you know, it goes through you and, and unless there's an issue, we don't hear about it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, which is which has been really helpful for us as a company. We can concentrate on other things, it, you know, it, and you have the autonomy pretty much to just run your your, your guys as you see fit. I mean, within within yeah. reason, and, I mean, uh, but other than that, yeah. you know. And I, I, that's, uh, you know, I appreciate that, appreciate that because it makes it very easier. And again, working, you know, for you, it makes it easier for me to do my job and, you know, at the end of the day, like, we're, I see my role as we're here to make a, a product, deliver a quality product to the customer. <laughs> However we do that, we do it and we get it done. And, you know, it's important, you know, in my previous role, customer relations, right, if you yep. want to call it that, same thing. Um, dealing with the customers and, like, customers have frustrations mm -hmm. and so forth, so we want to make mitigate that as best we can or, or make it work. And, you know, it's always something. Some, some Every interaction, yeah, right, regardless right. of what kind of interaction Some are smooth, yeah. some there's glitches, and um, we'll make it work. And uh, that's, that's – it's I find it challenging on a personal level to, to do that, to have the conflict or whatever, and then, you know, make it work at the end. Um, you know, so the customers are happy. And, like, yeah, I hear, you know, I hear stories, you know, I've only been here a year – Customers. You've been here a year and a half. It was January. So it's no, yeah, February first or January first, something like that. 20, 2023 now, right? So yeah, yeah. So you're almost a year. You're a year and four months. A year somewhere around there. But like, I'll still ask, like, is this the way? And be like, oh yeah, this this customer, he used to come to us and then he left and he's back. <laughs> and there's a reason why <laughs> and, he's back. And uh, he's I've, usually not happy with wherever he went to. And and, and yeah, and, and 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 again, being a being a customer in my previous life, like. He, you know you're getting a good quality, and then you're not getting it, and then it's like, oh boy, and you know. Yeah, we lost. We did, and we've lost customers. You know, and, and and we always get, oh, we had to go somewhere else because they were they were the the low bidder, and you know, in government work, a lot of times they right. go they they go strictly by low bidder. Right. Well, the thing that I'll tell you about the low bidder sometimes is they're the low bidder because they're cutting corners. Number mm -hmm. one, and number two, you're constantly going back there with your vehicle, you know, and this is a big state. I mean, you want to send a guy. You know, your department wasn't huge. You, you got to send two guys to drop a car off two hours away. Are you paying overtime? Are you going to authorize the overtime? Right. Like that money never gets counted into that mm -hmm. that 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 cost of vehicle. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're 15 minutes from us, why are you going to take your car two hours away? Right. And then you know you, you got to keep taking it back and forth. You know, I got to send two guys down with it, two guys to pick it up. And our, our and you know we kind of pride ourselves too on the our responsiveness. So if someone's coming in. We'll, we'll bring them in so they can a lot of times wait for whatever. Yeah, if it's, it's a small, if it's a smaller issue, they, you hope to get them back on the road in an hour. Yeah, recognizing that, like you're dropping the car off two guys or you know girls, and the next thing you know, you're wasting you know many man hours just to drop a car off. Where yeah. we, if we can take care of it right away, and it could be overtime, right? A smaller department. There's, yeah. there's three guys on the road. Yeah. They, might, they might have to call in two other people to, to come in yeah. and and you know and 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 bring a vehicle. I mean, it's. How crazy is that? Yeah, no, you know? it's, and it's something that most people don't think about, right? No. Until you're actually doing it. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, and as a, as a, as a supervisor, you got to make that call, man. Mm -hmm. I got to get this car there, but am I going to pay two officers overtime to run that car down mm -hmm. there, or can I get the, the public works to maybe send a guy with them, or right. you know? It, it, but it becomes a, again, it's a, it's all a, you know, you got to move the pieces around, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. you know, and like you said, you understand from when you were when you were doing it. So now you try and make it. So that it, that doesn't happen to people, right? So, yeah. so you try and yeah, you know, 100%. hey, listen, we'll try and do it while you wait. If not, you know, and, and we've done it before. Hey, listen, we, you know, we can't get it done. Can you get a ride? If you can't get a ride, we'll get, we'll get you back to your department at least, yeah. so they can, yep. you know, so you're not you're not tying up another 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 whoever it might be another body, yeah, another for, body from whatever else. whatever either from the DPW, <clears throat> you know, the chief's office, a secretary, mm -hmm. anybody who's going to run over and pick them up. It's still it's time, it's money, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. So, but. Uh, it's been all good stuff so far. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm sure we'll get some more complicated builds in there for you. Ch yeah, really good. <laughs> really, cha really challenging. Keep the keep the brain working. So. Yeah. Nah. Look forward to it. Mike, I've noticed that you you've you've kind of let your facial hair grow so <laughs> since you've been uh, since you worked here. I mean, when you came in, you were clean shaven for the interview. You I haven't noticed. You know, 
You know, yeah. now, now you're starting to look a little bit. You know, you've been hanging out with these 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 guys in the shop. Too that's long, what right? it is. That are yeah. influencing you, huh? <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, they they they. But they haven't influenced you yet to stop going to the gym or eat unhealthy. Well, you do eat unhealthy foods. I, do. I don't know how you pull it off. No, but. it's it's all an act. Yeah. So, I mean, uh... I know. I, the one thing I will say though that it, that I did notice is that the physical fitness level of the of the shop has increased since you've been there. <laughs> That's good. I mean, I know, I know, I know you. You know, you take your physical fitness pretty seriously, and uh, I, I know a lot of times on your lunch break, you you're not taking lunch. You're going to the gym. And then other times you're running after work. They uh, did. F- they the guys did force me to go to Wendy's the other day though for lunch. Oh, what did they you, what for- did you have? Grill, they grilled for- chicken salad. No, I had the spicy chicken. So it's chicken. It's, it's healthy. Chicken. They yeah. forced me though. They asked me nicely, <laughs> and I went. But uh, yeah. yeah, but you do. You're a junk food guy. Like, oh yeah. I, I, like yeah. Like you're eating junk food. Mm-hmm. I look at junk food. I put on five pounds. Yeah. If anybody, you know, the guys are always have snacks at their stations and so forth, and. Uh, Forget that mix, it. that they, that, that, that Utz's mix, right? The yeah, the pretzels with the, the with trail the, mix, with the, yeah, and, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. For, they gotta hide it when I'm and like forget it. somebody brings donuts in, forget it. Oh, that, that's you, you fit the, you fit the. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but now you're, you're not in uniform, so you don't have to worry about anything on yourself. That's right. <laughs> right? But, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's 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 been it's been it's been interesting. I, I there's a couple guys there that I know, you know, and Nicholas definitely, uh, you know. You took him under your wing in the gym, and you know he's definitely lost some weight, and he's uh, he's um, transformed. Yeah, because we were uh, he was just uh, we we're talking about that the other day since a year a year ago. He's really, and it's good. It's good to see his pride. And he's, I'm proud of him. He's proud, and he's proud of it too. Yeah, I remember I came in a, a couple months ago, and you guys were doing the, the protein stuff, and then there, there you are. You know, he's got eight eggs out. You got six eggs out. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, yeah, would you guys would you guys tip over a chicken that, truck or, or, or you know? Yeah, that yeah. was the fad last. It'll be something else next month, so yeah. we'll see. You'll be on keto next month. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then so you know, then, and then what on the uh, the caveman diet next, and then and then back to back to something else. And, yeah, yeah. You know, gonna mix it up a little bit. Keep and then eat, and then eat a whole pizza one day because you, <laughs> yeah. you just feel like it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's it's definitely it, you've definitely had your influence <laughs> on certain things in, in, in the in the shop, and I and I do notice it. I mean. I notice the guys are more into into their physical fitness. Um, you know, I I know on Wednesdays that we have uh, we have a, a, a day where for an hour a, uh, a personal trainer comes in and kind of uh, a part of a wellness program that we have. And and I know that that you take it as a challenge, but I notice that your guys when they're in there doing it, they're all ch- trying to challenge you as well. <laughs> and I can right. see that they're all trying to <laughs> trying to keep up with you. And you know, listen. You and I know how old we are, and our number starts with five. That's right. Right? And those guys' numbers start with two and three, most yep. of them. And you're still uh, – Some of them won. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Some of them are one. And you're still uh, you're still out there kicking their butts yeah. in the, uh, yeah, in the that physical feels good. fitness. That so, does feel good. So, you know. And, and I know it doesn't go unnoticed either because I know you – I notice a couple of comments that you make to these guys at the end, like, you know, I'm, I'm two and a half times your age. Well, you know, you got to keep up. No, I never so, say that. <laughs> no, you imply it though. It's, it's all implied in the sarcasm that you throw at them every so often. Sarca- sarcasm? No, there's no sarcasm. No sarcasm. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I, I think you know, there's there's there's, there's a goal for, for physical fitness, and I think, you know, your next challenge. I have a challenge for you is to take uh, take the logistics manager under your wing and get him in there. Yeah. Well, I, I've been I've been working on him. It's going to be a but uh... challenge accepted though. I know you've been working on him. So. <laughs> but you know the nice thing about again. Um, the physical, the fitness uh, hour we have on, you know, on company time Wednesdays, like that's a great perk because that's production stopping, but it's also important. And I, and I know you recognize this, it's team, like it's teamwork. It's pretty cool. It's, it's team building. And it's morale building and yeah. it makes you feel better. And it's, it's important. So. And it's not just you guys, it's the whole company. So yeah. everybody oh, yeah, right. from every, every, you know, so, it, and it, and it kind of gets people, it brings people in that maybe don't know each mm-hmm. other as well. And yes. you kind of, you have a little fun with it yep. and it's, it's an hour, um, Again, it does stop production for an hour, and it's but it's something we're willing as a company to, to to do because we recognize the value of the team building aspect of it as well as the wellness hour. Right. You know, if it, if it helps for that one hour to maybe mo- motivate somebody to go to the gym four or five days a week, that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of how we look at it. But um, and then you got guys like you that that work out two times a day, <laughs> seven days a week. So you know, you, 
regardless if we had to work that hour or not. But you can you can definitely see the uh, the change in a lot of the, a lot of the, yeah. the employees there. It's good. Um, you know that that they're you know they're working towards their fitness goals and they're you know and you know hopefully we can help them and it gives them an, it gives them an hour to just kind of mm-hmm. decompress, not be part of work and not be part of you know it's just an yeah. hour of of you're there, you're right. physically there, but you're doing other things than, than your work and I think it, yeah. I think it really helps. I mean, those guys you know and 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 everybody in every every aspect of the business, everybody's working hard. Mm-hmm. It's not just I can't just say the install shop, the wood shop, you know, marketing, you know, engineering. Everybody's working their tail off because we are so busy. Yeah. And so, as a company, for everybody to be able to take one hour and just kind of decompress, and it happens where guys can't take the hour. You know. Yeah. You know. That's right. And you know, you know, I know, you know, if marketing's tied up doing video, they they can't take the hour. If if you got a guy coming in. For repair, and you got two guys on the car mm-hmm. trying to repair it. They can't take yeah. the hour, and they, they understand that too. But yeah. you know, they get back into it the next week when they can, and you know, we try and make it available to everybody as 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 a as a perk. But you know, sometimes the workload just doesn't allow it, and and that's the other thing. The employees are good about it, right? They they recognize when, hey, listen, I can't make it today, mm-hmm. but I'll be back next week. I hope yeah. as long as you know I can get through my work. So it's a, it's a good benefit to have, and and we enjoy you know doing a lot of that stuff and you know it's good to see the employees getting a little having a little fun and yeah. at work and just kind of yeah. blow off some steam yep the trainer that does come in uh it's john canjan from mm-hmm. uh, performance design he has a mobile mobile gym system and you know i've known john since i worked out doing crossfit with him 20 years ago um and he he's a he's a great guy he's a great trainer and i think uh i think a lot of his energy helps feed everybody else's energy but you know he does a great job, and and he comes in, and he's got a, he's also got a um, a women's uh, fitness trainer that he's brought on too. So he's got he's, yeah. He's, and a lot a lot of times people are intimidated by if they say there's going to be like a you know they don't want to go to a workout because they never worked out or they don't know what to do in the sense. And John has that uh, he has the uh, the ability to inc- be include everyone. Yeah. So it could be your you've been working out for a hundred years. It's your first day. He has a way to handle people and treat everybody in such a way, and the, the things that are, he's doing, everybody does. Yeah, everybody can do and, it, and it doesn't matter everybody what your can do level it. is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, and he, and he does do modifications. Like I got a bad knee, so he'll do yeah, modifications sure. for me. Yeah. And you know, if, if you're if you're having back issues or you're having shoulder issues, he, hey, listen, don't do it this way. Do it this way. And we right. got to do this to strengthen your arm because this yeah. is what's causing it. And and he's pretty good with that. And um, you know, I, I think the like you said, I, I it can be intimidating, especially. When you're with all your peers and and it's like well yeah. i'm not really a workout guy yeah, right but, but this guy's been working out for you know 40 years you know and, and i can see how people get intimidated yeah. you know so but i appreciate you i know you're busy i know you got to get back to the guys but we appreciate you taking like an hour out of your day today yeah. to come come kind of bs with me and i know sometimes you know bsing with the boss is not the <laughs> some guys like it some guys don't i mean i know you 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 could pretty much care less because <laughs> if i walk out of here you'll be like hey by the way i got a few things i need to talk to you about to, for the guys so but uh, thanks again, yeah, and, yeah, and happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And you know, listen, if you need anything from Mike, reach out to him. Mike's, you know, does all that, that conversion stuff. So if you're having issues with your vehicle, and you know, reach out to Mike. Don't reach out to me. <laughs> thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thank your time. You. Thanks. <laughs>